Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. 101. Yeah, we gonna talk. Oh, shit. Today on Rich People Problems, we have Damon Dash trying to blame social media for paying rappers money for promoting violence. Oh, you talking about on that Shannon Sharp, uh, uh, I guess that's Shannon Sharp interview. Uh, Shay Shay or something like that, man. Uh, shout out to Club that boy. Shay Shay. Yeah, Club Shay Shay. So what? What? What did you? What did you? What did he say? He basically, he basically saying that like YouTube, like YouTube paying rappers for YouTube paying rappers money to promote violence, really. And like he think they should not pay YouTube. I mean, they should not pay rappers money to promote violence. That's actually doing damage to the community. Yeah, I ride with Dame, but uh, sometimes you know I, I I can't say that I agree with that because. Um, you know, I mean, people report, people report the news every day. Um, and people get paid for reporting mm -hmm. the news. Uh, people going to do what they're going to do. I mean, just because something speaks, the, YouTube is a, a tool just like television was back in the day. So I just don't mm -hmm. see it being a, a, a game changer like that. Um, there's, there's a lot more deeper rooted issues going on in neighborhoods and different people lives. Like you always asking them right. over here about what they've been through. And I think that stimulates a lot of the hate and the anger and the stuff that comes out in, in the beefs and all that good stuff. People not knowing how to control the anger. So I don't know if I agree with him on that. I think it's the labels. Like it should be labels because labels sign them and they know what music they're putting out. So like if you're putting out that type of music, you know what type of response you're going to get from their music. So it's, it's going to be, there's consequences behind certain music you put out. Like if you put out good music, you're going to have good consequences behind it. If you put out, if you put out, I gotta say, street music. You don't have street stuff that like the streets gonna come at you with certain different stuff. So it's like you gotta whatever music you put out is, that is gonna follow you. Yeah, but Dame, you know, like I said, Dame's real opinionated. Here's what he had to say about it. This rap beef that we have going on, we see Pop Smoke, we see so many of these young Dolph, we see so many of these guys. What's going on? How how, how do we stop that? It's an algorithm that needs to be stopped. So. The algorithm that's like, if you like to look at trolling and beef and and it pops up on your phone, YouTube should stop paying when people put up beef. That algorithm needs to be stopped. The algorithms are controlling us right now. Mm -hmm. So instead of people paying attention to a negative algorithm, they should pay attention to a positive one. It's just a program that we keep falling into. But at the end of the day, you know, um, I just don't know if you can just scale it the way that he's scaling it. You know, I think you got to be more. No, um, you got to go, go into more deep details about this. Just YouTube, like you got to go way more detail because there's other, there's other platforms that's paying you that promote the same music. So yeah. like if you're gonna do YouTube, you might well do all the platforms. Don't just do one platform and blame one platform. You can p put your music on different platforms. Yeah, no, I get it, man. Um, what do you think? You think you think YouTube is is a, that algorithm? That whole algorithm? People should uh, not pay if if something comes over to air about beef, or do you feel like it's um, the way? I, I don't know. I was explaining it about like the news. I just don't know how much of a impact is going to change if you don't do it on YouTube. It's just so many different platforms. I agree with him. Whereas we need a change, but at the same time, you can't. They always say negativity sells. So regardless, people are going to always strive for that. I get it. He also was, uh, I agree. He also was uh, talking about um, the time when he was going to purchase the, uh, I guess he was trying to purchase the uh, the Raiders, I guess. Dane, man, I, I'm a big fan of Dane, but like, like I agree with him on that. You know, uh, blacks are being... Uh, there. I mean, he's like, he, wow. yeah. He act like the, what he says makes sense because when you look at the owners and they sitting in the uh, they sitting up in the high sky box while the players are out on the field like gladiators and animals, and they sit back and Watch and they the own it, and they won't even they brought laugh and having a good time, but they won't even let in their little circle other people participate. They have no. There's nothing. There's no black owners in the NFL. They, uh, they but had, spoke had, on that recently, didn't we? Yeah, but but Dane brought it up on on Shay on on, on on Club Shay Shay. So at the end of the day, I was just talking about it because because money Mo <laughs> money Moses brought it up. You know, and I think Mo I heard uh, uh, you have they have to get to know you before you you can even try to purchase a team. They have to get to know you your, what how your lifestyle is and all that before you can purchase a team. 
which yeah. I think was that that shouldn't shouldn't matter. Like, yeah, because if you got the money to have a business mind, you should be able to purchase. You shouldn't have to go to your lifestyle and see what you went to just to just do that. Like I say, because some people can can have a bad background and change their life, but you gonna use that against them. No, I get it. But you know they're gonna use it anyway. They're gonna try to use it against us. But like that's one way they can hold us back or try to hold us back. No, no, I I agree. What do you think? You think that there should be black uh, owners in the NFL? Most definitely. <laughs> But but there's not, and is it is it the owner's fault that there aren't more black owners? Do yes. You, so you think it's they're the keeping them out because the owners have meetings? Like, what what higher do you get than the owners? No, I get it. I get the organization. You... Exactly. So it's like, there's an organization or, f- or a federation, just like you have the president, but you have somebody higher than him. You have the Supreme Court. Yeah, but you're the owner of your team. You can control your coaches. You can control so who players yes, come to. Yes, but then you have the federation that is that deals with that. That politics play a part. If they say X, Y, Z, and you know try to blackball that team because that team you know decide to such and such, they don't want that smoke. You're right, but you already own that team. So you tell me if you own the house, and they're gonna tell you, hey, if you don't do this, they can kick out the house. You know, you own the house. No, meaning like if I'm selling a team, and I want to sell it to Damon Dash, and I don't want my team to suffer because of the federation. That then he he they know that. They're not gonna like it that somebody black owning that team. No, they're not gonna like it. Okay, so I don't want my team to suffer, or my legacy to go down the drain. So I'm not gonna sell, sell it to him. I want to see my team do well. Although it's not gonna be my team anymore. But you have to look at it from from a separate point. You have a good point. I mean, you have good and bad on anything you do. It's gonna always be good. It's gonna always be bad. It depends on what if you suffering just a little bit. What if, what if the outcome on the other side is way greater than the suffering? So it's like you have to look at that point too. No, I agree. I agree that I, I think both of y'all hitting on some core cool subjects. But I mean, Dane pretty much said it was you know um, a thing where he just felt like they they doing a little bit more you know celebrating the fact that these guys out there on the field you know it's like they're being exploited almost. And here, here's what he had to say: You mentioned your arena league. What you and and listening that you talk, you said, well, I'm tired of seeing that. People that look like me do all the heavy lifting. They do all the leg work. They catch the ball. They throw the ball. They tackle the they guy. Hit, they getting hit. They the getting hit. All that shit. While we look up there, and the people that's looking at us are making the money. Look like us. They don't look like us. They're paying us. They're laughing at us. That's the way I look at it. So, if you had an opportunity to buy an NFL team, you don't want to buy an NFL team. I you will. want to go to competing league. No, no, no. If they want to play nice, we've tried to buy. How many black men have tried to buy football teams and a white board said no? I know Ray Lewis tried. As a majority or as a minority? Be- I want I want to be the boss. Okay. Well, how, but here's the thing. Dang. I tried to buy the Raiders. Dame, 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 <laughs> I tried. Dame, 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 I get it. Dame, I get it. But how many black people have the capital to be able to put up 30% of an NFL team. First of all, how many people in general put up their own money in the first place anyway? We all have to come together and put our money together, make right. a fund, and go make it. Right. That's the difference between us and them. They know how to leverage. They know how to stick together. They don't put up no money. They pre-sell everything before it happens. You, get a, you, get, you build an arena, you pre-sell the rights to the naming rights, and then it pays for everything. They just, we just don't know how to do it. There's no owner 101. I'll give it to you. I made one. I know how to run a team right now, I think, but I'm going to try. But, you know, I mean, you can tend to agree with him or you don't have to agree with him. But I think he did a pretty good interview with, with, with uh, Shannon Sharp. I like I like the flow of it. He always do really great interviews. He's dope, man. I've, I've been a fan. you seen him when we was in Vegas. Uh, he definitely knows how to articulate and he loves his people. Another, He's like a... He's like an East Coast pimp C for me, to be honest with mm-hmm. you. He he looks out for the people. I'll always have love for Dame Dash, as far as the way he stand for. He lo- he love our people, and I could see that in in the way he moves. So I'll always be a big fan. Shout out to Dame Dash and Boss Talk One on One. That's my guy. Um, who else you got? What else we got? You got some? I got um, Ti's daughter, the oldest one. I think her name is Deja. She um, came out in the open in the open on IG talking about her scars because she's been cutting herself. Wow! And um, just talked about not the reason why or how people look at her and stuff like that, but it's just bringing awareness to that right now. And 
telling people it's okay, you need to talk about it, that you are loved, you are important, that I see you. Because a lot of people who do that, like she was saying, is that they feel like they're not being seen, they're not being heard, so they hurt themselves. Wow. So, wow, that's a that's a touchy subject, man. When you start looking at people self-inflicting harm on mm-hmm. themselves, man, that's a deep down, uh, that's, that's a depression, that's... That's that's a tough one, man. I, I, what do you think, Money Moses? Like I said, that's like I said, that's something that she's been dealing with for a long time. You can actually tell, like so she's been dealing with something for a long time. Think it stimulates from the family? Mm. Yes, I say that because, like you saying, like you say, it's a good and bad on both sides. Like saying, just because they got money, they don't mean they paying attention to their kids, paying attention to they how how they living. Like you saying, you probably got so much money to the point you can't even be there with them, or you probably see them probably once a week or something like that. Wow, like you, say, you never know what. Just the way they dealing with, like I said, she probably want her daddy around. Like I said, but you never know. You probably not around like she wanted to be. Yeah. Now some kids like that. I agree. And Ti came to her side and you know praised her for coming out in the open and being brave as she because it takes someone to be brave to step up about any issues that they're going through in today's society, especially on social media when you have so many vultures, whether coming to the praise but also you know bashing them for. The, these different things. Man, T.I. Dope, man, the way he did with his kids, I ain't gonna lie to you, um, to put it out there like he did, to put his whole family on Family Hustle and just to put it out there in front of everybody and, 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 and take the shots that he had to take no matter what was going on, I got to commend him. I, I I put him on a whole nother level when it come down to uh, parenting. Um, I... I uh, that's dope. I mean, I, I can't see the flaw in what he did. He gave a hell of a shot Parenting isn't easy. You shooting from the hip trying to figure out what to do. Did she ever say how long she been doing it? No. She never said. Mm-mm. Just been doing it for a while, I guess. Well, I just think so God, that, so she didn't, did nothing bad worse have, happen. Go ahead. Have her, like you saying, have Ti ever just noticed that? They have ever noticed that about her, her cutting herself? Right. That's what I was like, looking never, for, but I didn't see that. I like, ain't no way in hell. I'm sure that ain't he no way. knew. I'm sure that, that he probably knew, you know, I'm just speculating, but I'm sure that he probably knew. But when cases like that, you, nobody's going to come out in the open and try You're probably going to, like, talk to them. And being a black parent, you're going to be like, why are you doing that? You're not going to try to take them straight to counseling or anything like that. You're going to try to deal with it yourself no, first. You're right, but, but at his point, you got to understand at his point, at his stature where he at, you got to look at him like, is is. Like I said, it, it depends on what the problem was because it can be a different problem from our problem because, like I said, we're not in the same situation, so it's like a different mm-hmm. situation. So it can be some like somebody at school or something like that or somebody in the street, something like that, or somebody in the household. Like I said, you never know what it could be. So it's like that's a hard situation to deal with. Because when, when, when you said, when T.I. Uh, said he commend her for speaking out about it, well, how long have you, you been knowing about it for it to keep happening? Man, like if it keep ha- on, if it keep happening, if it happened the first time, and it keep happening again, something wrong. You gotta do something. You can't keep letting it happen. Even if you're dead, you gotta make something happen. I agree, Money Moses, man. So hey, man, um, that's it's been another great segment, man. So man, uh, rich people problem, man. Make sure you guys uh, like and subscribe to our channel. Make sure you um, uh, let us know if it's anything that. Uh, uh, anybody you'd like to see on Boss Talk 101 or if it's anything that we can do to help uh, push a narrative man in a positive format, right? In a way to where we can help people. Definitely man. like, subscribe, follow everything on all platforms. We're Boss Talk Podcast 101 on all platforms. Rich people problems. Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. 101. Yeah, we gonna talk.